أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد The next point in the sermon of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam with the description of the muttaqi is that he says وَمَشْيُهُمْ أَتَّوَاضُعُ مَشْيُهُمْ Meaning that they walk or as it's mentioned when you say someone's gait Someone's gait is the way that they carry themselves, the way they move, the way that they strut. The way that they move along, they call this their mashi. Their walk. Mashuhum at tawadu. Their style of walk is tawadu. When you see this word, you want to understand what humility is you need to understand that there are several types of humility and how one acquires humility there is humility in every aspect of the humility that we have is humility towards knowledge you know when it comes to acquiring knowledge someone must have tawadu I mentioned an example several nights ago that sometimes you will see someone that is quiet and does not speak but they know the answer they have an understanding sometimes honestly I remember once I was giving a lesson and those that were seated were between the ages of 12 and 15 so taban the level of discussion or the style that you speak in is customized for them there was one brother that was seated there and he was in his early 20s and he was a, a medical student not only was he someone that was older in age but also he was an academic he was seated the whole time and he didn't speak However, when I sat with him afterwards, he was someone that understood religion. He was very well learned. And I looked at him and I said, when you finish whatever you're doing, you should go study religious study because you're made for religious study. This is what is required for studying religion. Tawada. Humility. This is why when someone is trying to explain something to you sometimes someone is saying a story do you remember the story that you are told on a general uh, in a general discussion when it comes to dealing with your neighbor there are two stories honestly you probably heard a million times one of them is the story of the prophet with the Jewish neighbor and the other story that you probably always hear is the one of Imam Hassan and Hussein alayhum, alayhum salam, teaching the old man how to do wudu you hear these stories so often. Yet there are people that when they listen, they listen so eagerly. They make you feel like you're telling them the story for the first time. And they could have heard it a million times. But they are humble and they are ready to listen to what you say. Not like those people that when you want to speak, they'll finish off the sentence for you bit like that little meme that they have that it says um, he says is Google a, a boy or a girl and he says no it's a girl because it always suggests things to you before you finish writing the question some people before you even conclude with what you've got to say they give you a million opinions without giving you time to finish the sentence that you have this is when someone does not have a humility towards acquiring knowledge. See, pride, which is the antonym of humility. Takabbur, when someone has kibr, 
This is the opposite of having tawadu. This is when you see yourself above others. And the first one that is mentioned in the Quran to have kibr was who? Iblis. Illa Iblis. Aba was takbar. Wa kana minal kafirin. Allah Azza wa Jal says because of his pride, it rendered him a kafir, a rejecter of the signs. A disbeliever, an unbeliever, someone that turned away from God because of his pride. That I'm above this. That I should not be with those that prostrate to Adam because I think that I am better than him in one way or another. Now, even when it comes to those that have knowledge. If you take a look at the ulama, the ulama that people respect in general, without naming any names, the ulama that people respect are the ones that have humility. They are humble. That they have sincerity with their humility. That when they are seated before you, they make you feel like you are one of them. Even God's messenger. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam The one that has all the virtues The one that understands everything The one whom Allah azza wa jal When he mentions the verse Sirat Sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim Sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim Full stop That the path of the ones that you put all your blessings upon them. When we say an'amta alayhim and we stop, it is saying every ni'mah has been poured upon them. It doesn't say illa or except, it says every blessing has been poured upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and ahlil bayt alayhum as salam. Yet when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam would enter the masjid, he would quickly move in and take the first vacant seat and sit down. He didn't enter with his entourage. He didn't come in with a convoy of 60 cars. Ya alam shufuni, that I'm here, I've entered the building. Superman's in the building. He never made an entrance like that. He would enter, the first entrance he sees, the first place he sees, he sits down. Tawadu. Any alim or so-called alim that does not have tawadu is just wearing the garb. They just wear the garb of the ulama. If they don't have the humility. If they, you know, one, one, one of the brothers once said that they went to visit someone. And he said that we weren't even allowed. And this isn't someone that was, you know, and let's not get this mixed up. Sometimes someone has a security issue that he can be killed. Tabani has the protection. But he went to visit someone that didn't even have a security issue. There was no issue. This person was even marked, not targeted. Yet they were not allowed near this person for about 10 meters. They could not come this, near this person for 10 meters where is the tawada? Where is the humility? Or humility? Even when it comes to our lives, our social lives, how we deal with others, and especially when it comes to the parents, our humility towards our parents, we should not walk before our parents. You should not walk in, in front of your parents. You walk next to them or behind them, generally behind them. I should rise when my parent is, enters the room and sit, sit after they are seated. This is a sign of humility in this manner. Those that walk, inshallah, may Allah grant you the opportunity to visit the sacred house of God. And we supplicate in this month, Allahumma rzuqna hajja baytika al-haram. That we ask Allah not only for this year, but every year to come, that we are granted the opportunity to go to the Hajj. Al Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba, Alayhi Afdal Salat Wasalam, 
whose birthday we celebrated last night walk to the Hajj alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah he walked to the Hajj barefoot 20 times then he walked to the Hajj now I want you to think about this you know when you say I walk to the Hajj you're walking from Medina to Mecca you need to think of it in this manner if anyone's traveled you go in those buses the distance between Medina and Mecca is how far approximately huh it's about four hours so it's about it's approximately about 300 kilometers 300 kilometers if you had to walk that if you had to walk that distance you and I it's not an issue because shaglat nafadi as we say we've got nothing else to do but Al-Imam Hujjatullahi ala al-khalq This is God's connection to you God's connection to the universe Has to walk Walks, not has to It's not being obligatory He's chose to do this To show the importance of the Hajj This humility towards This sacred house Of God Those that go after this Those that walk to Haram Aba Abdullah al Hussein. In the ziyara, this is a walk of humility that they walk towards the shrine and they walk showing respect and humility towards the shrine, even those that attend the centers and those that serve the tea, those that work in the centers. This is humility towards these places. You need to remember that this humility does not go without reward in this world. Not only in the next. That once a man had a problem with another man and this other man was not a follower of Madhab Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. This person was someone who followed the other sects in Islam. He had a problem with him. So he went to the shrine of Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam to ask the Imam to take vengeance for him from this man. In the dream, he saw the Imam, and the Imam said that this person has shown humility towards us. And this is why we will not do to him what you ask. What did he do? He said that when he. Can someone please take that child and um, take him to his father, please? Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Afwan, we don't have to tell you to look after your children, you know. It's, it's not an effort, you know. We're not only meant to have children, we're also meant to pick them up when they run around. So please look after your kids. We've mentioned this before. Have them seated next to you. Honestly, some people have got babies sitting next to them, they're not doing anything. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So the Imam said he has shown humility to the shrine that when he was passing by the shrine of Imam Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam that he was on horseback. When he saw the dome of the shrine that he got down off his horse. And he walked the horse until he could no longer see the dome. Out of respect for it, then he got back on the horse. And this wasn't a Shia Muslim. He says because of this humility that he showed towards this dome. The Imam said we cannot do. We will not do something to this person that has humility towards the shrine of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Even when it comes to dealing with believers, Allah Azza wa Jal, just want to give you first some traditions before we move on and verses. He says to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam, He says, Waqfid janahaka lil mu'mineen. In other words, when we say this, you know, the, in the manner of he uses the, 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 he uses the example of 
Janah mean he the wings. You know the way that a bird is to its young. She says to lower your wings. In other words, be gentle. If you notice how a bird is to its offspring, how it's gentle, this is how you must be to other believers. A believer should not be a fearsome person. We've went over this many a times, and I'll remind you again. A believer should not be someone that people fear. A believer should be someone you feel safe around. You don't fear them. He shouldn't be someone that should be viewed as a problem. On the contrary, he should be someone that is viewed as what? As a blessing, someone that is viewed as a friend, someone that is used, viewed as harmless. Not seen as something that or someone that will affect us in any way. Samahat Sayyid last night mentioned on the Mambar uh, the statement made by Sheikh Al Huraifi. And this guy, the, thing is, the amazing thing about this guy, this guy is an ardent, he's a staunch enemy of the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, of the followers of Ahlul Bayt. However, when he was in London, a friend of mine in London sent me a picture where a person who is a Shia was standing next to him in the, in the name of unity. To take, this person is not someone that, that wants unity at all. This is pers a person that calls you a kafir. Yet he stood next to him. This Uraifi is sitting in the car, lying back, and this person's taking a photo, leaning into the car, holding his hand and smiling. And the Uraifi is giving him a look of, okay, you know, a bit like the look that Al Hajjaj would have given Ab Abdullah bin Omar when he gave him bay'ah to his foot. That look, you know, if that's, that's what makes you happy, then so be it. So we sat there and took a photo. This is not what is required in Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal says in this verse, وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ I should be harmless to people, but my humility. And as you know in the verse, Muhammad Rasulullah. والذين معه أشداء على الكفار حماء بينه. that the people that are with رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أشداء على الكفار. that when they deal with these types of people, especially these ones that are, we should not sit there, you shouldn't even smile in this person's face, should not show him that he's even accepted. Treat him in contempt Just as he's treated you in that manner Where is the mercy? The biggest problem I find Is when someone speaks in this manner The people, the, the Sushis The Sunni Shias The ones that try and do this fake unity They are the first people They are the first people to slander you They say for example I've heard this many times Someone comes out of nowhere And says um, Oh we shouldn't brother We should not talk about The Sahaba Or this or that Oh was this happened in Lebanon This is recent You know I said we are sitting In a private gathering No one's going to hear us He said nothing And then they mentioned One of the English speakers That have on TV That uh, open with the Tabari you know what he said about this person? He said, this person's Ibn Zina. Straight out. I said, La ilaha illallah. You have committed such a sin that God knows what will happen to you on the day of judgment. Yet you refrain from calling an Ibn Zina, Ibn Zina. A real one. You refrain to damn someone that is a bona fide, certified. He's got the tag and all, the ribbon. Four ways, more than one. Yet you refuse to make a statement against him, but you will make a statement against another believer. Not that I support the way and the, the, the methods of this person, but to call him that, Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't know. Even if he goes around calling other people, you can't call him that. 
What right do you have over him to call him that? And this is what happens. This is called false unity. The real unity is what you are supposed to do. You're supposed to treat everyone that says the shahadatain with the same rights as every other Muslim. Except those that are open enemies to your words. Someone that says we are all Muslims brother, you say yes we are all Muslims brother. But someone that says you're a kafir, rafidi, how can you say to him well he's your brother? He's already cut you off. He's already cut that line where there is any brotherhood. So anyway, if we look at what the importance is of humility before we talk about walking with humility. When it comes to Islam, when it comes to belief, why do I need this humility? How, what is so important about tawada for me to understand belief? Firstly, if I don't have tawada, I don't have the ears that want to listen. I won't take in information because then I look and say, who this person wants to teach me? Who is this person? Or this person, I am older than this person. Or this person just started learning two days ago, I know more than this person. This is the attitude people held. From the very beginning, there was Hashim, Salamullah Ali, the great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and there was Umayyah. Two heads of two tribes. They both fell under the umbrella of the larger tribe of Quraysh, but there was a hidden hatred from Umayyah towards Hashim. But Banu Hashim were always known to be people that wanted to help others and do good by others. And evidence of this is that even the way people respected them and treated them. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam when he came towards the people and lived with the people before telling the people of what he knew. The fact that he knew that he was the messenger of God, unable to reveal the message yet, the people referred to him as what? As-Sadiq al-Amin. You all know this. He was the honest and he was the trustworthy. Could you imagine this was your title amongst the people? They go, this person is As-Sadiq al-Amin. Imagine like your title was that. As opposed to someone calling this person al kadhab As-Sadiq Al-Ameen. And this is what they would refer to him as, the honest and the trustworthy. He's Ameen, you can trust him with anything. He's honest, he does not speak but the truth. Then when the time came for him to call them to Islam, this is when the tawada comes in. If I am someone that has humility, and I am humble towards this. You know, sometimes when you say this is one of the biggest arguments, and, and for me, this is the litmus test to know, for a person, to know if they're on the right path or the wrong path. You want to know, I'll give you a litmus test. I'll give you sifat. I'll say, uh, for example, I'll give you a good example to start off with. Once in, in, in Saudi Arabia, we were in a taxi, and I was with one of my friends, and my friend was saying to the taxi driver, he said to the taxi driver, two arguments, just to give you an idea. His, the first one he said was, what does the earth look like? And the taxi driver said, well, it's, you know, it's Kurawi. He says it's spherical, or to be more meticulous, it's... Um, Elliptical. Okay, so the earth is elliptical, but he said it's shaped like a ball. So he said, that's good. How do you know this? He said, from satellite photos. He said, alhamdulillah, this guy is accustomed and, um, with technology. He actually knows about technology, which is good. You rarely find that with a taxi driver in Mecca. 
you know, just to give you an honest, to give you an idea, once I gave one taxi driver the business card, which is printed of the hotel, I said, can you take me to this hotel? He said, I can't read khat idak. I can't read your writing. It was printed. Yeah. <laughs> this is this thing. And he couldn't, he was, he found he was too proud to say, I'm illiterate. Do you understand what I mean? Too proud. Rather than say, look, I can't read. That's okay, then I'll read it for you. But he didn't want to admit to this. So anyway, he said, all right, what if I tell you that you're Sheikh bin Baz, that you people f follow and believe in, believes that the world is flat. And anyone that does not accept this concept is a heretic. That means that this person is a way munharif. This person has left the path. He said, did Bin Baz say that? He said, yes. He said, then the earth is flat. This is what I'm talking about. When we do taqdis to shakhsiyat, when we worship individuals, when we give individuals holiness, that if you say this thing's wrong, I say, yes, it does look wrong. You say, but Mr. Fulen or Fulen, he said this. I say, all right, it's right. Why? Because he said it. He's infallible. La yantiqa al hawa. This only implies, this only applies to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam. Everyone else can make error. If you can't accept that, then there's a problem with your religion. There's a problem with your faith. When another example similar to this, in the taxi, same friend, another taxi driver. And he said to him, he said, what would you say if someone retorted, someone rebuked the, the Prophet Someone stood in the face of the Prophet. He answered back the Prophet. The man said, Ar-radu ala Rasulillah kafir. The one that answers the Prophet back is a kafir. He said, okay. So he started talking about the Thursday calamity. They say, they say, al-Khamis. He said that on this day, that the Messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, was on his deathbed, and he said, Give me a pen and paper so that I may write something for you. Imagine these words that from this you will never go astray. And this man answered back. He didn't say what he said, he said he just answered back. And he said, Oh, you're talking about the Prophet? On his deathbed, he said, Yes. He said, Who was it? He said, Forget who it was. He said, If anyone answered back the Prophet, you just said he's a kafir. He said, Who was the one that answered the Prophet back? This is when you know you have a problem with your religion. You have a, even if you're a Shia and you worship, some people worship individuals. Because when an individual says something, they will not stand against because they say, This individual said it. This individual has taqdis. He cannot say wrong. He can never turn astray. But whenever they want, they'll make someone into a collaborator. Whenever they want, they'll make someone fall from the path. But when you show them what's right, they say, who said this? If you are saying this, my dear brothers and sisters, something's wrong with your religion. That if you're worried about who's saying this, unless this person's Rasulullah, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, if he told you yesterday that the sky is yellow and today he says it's purple, then yesterday it was yellow and today it's purple. That's it. This is the way it works with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But with everyone else, it doesn't work that way. Now when the Messenger of God said to the people, of the faith. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًّا فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُفْسِدِينَ When you hear the word وَجَحَدُوا He says وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا When you come and give them something, they utterly disbelieved in it. Why? What made them utterly? When it says here, وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ Okay? ظُلْمَةً Now what happens is, here it's saying, 
basically I'm, it's plain English they were too proud to accept this they became unjust because they were too proud I'm going to accept from this guy to start off he's from Banu Hashim he's not from our tribe that was one of the first arguments as for those that were from Banu Hashim like Abu Lahab they said it's my nephew telling me what to do it becomes, a problem, it becomes problematic who is this guy He's an orphan. You know, an orphan was someone that was seen lowly in society. There weren't people that were perceived. Who's this one? Who's holding this person's back? Who's, who's the one protecting this person? This person is going to teach me my faith. Who is this person? They couldn't accept it because they were too proud. And this is one of the arguments you receive every day. When you want to question a matter... I remember, and I'm, uh, rather than get, I don't want to get too close to an example so people understand. I want them to understand the concept more than point people out. That when you put forward an argument, the worst reply someone can give you is, you don't understand. Attack you personally. Because they openly attack people. Don't people openly attack Richard Dawkins? Richard Dawkins is a professor in biology. How many of you are professors in biology? In that case, none of you have any right to speak against him. This is, this is the argument they're putting forward. No. We have a right to talk. Just because I don't have a doctorate in something, if I understand the concept, and the concept they're putting forward, I use examples of other doctors and professors to make their argument defunct, it does not mean that you can argue and say, you don't know what this has been, or they, you don't know what's being said here. You don't understand. You haven't read it in its original language, the text. Mind you, everyone studies many books, and they're not in their original text. How many books do you study in university that aren't in their original text? There are a lot. A book that's been translated from German, a book that's been translated from French, a book that's been translated from Greece, from Greek. You don't get the original text. You get a translation, even the Bible, that is all over the, you know, the Quran in the majority of the households is in Arabic. But the Bible in the majority of households is in what? It's in English. Is that the original text? No. They're getting translations of what the original text is. But the gist is understood. They understand what is coming forth. We have the ability to reply to this. Now, we move towards the idea of the walk. Since, um, has a Sayyid come? Okay, then I can start with this. And they can wait. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So we move towards the first verse with regard to this subject. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا This is where it starts. This verse, Taban, to give it its right, came down upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But Ibad rahman is inclusive of everyone. We are all the servants of Allah, but the true servants are the ones that says He yamshuna ala al ardi hawnan. Now when you look, the English translation generally says those that walk on earth with humbleness or humility. But honan means more than that. According to our narrations, the narrations that we receive from Ahl al-Bayt salam, says that when they walk, it's like they have, they walk as if there is a mount upon them. There's a, some weight upon them that they walk in a manner does not mean they lean forward but they don't 
walk in which ways? The narration says they do not walk in a pose fashion. Just to give you an idea, if you look at the former dictator, Benito Mussolini, the leader of the fascist party, the inspiration of Adolf Hitler, he used to pose when he used to stand. He had the habit. You see this in wrestling characters as well. When they're in the ring, they pose. They'll flex this, this thing where they flex their biceps. I don't know what it indicates, but this idea, it's something that's a Neanderthal movement. I don't know. But they flex their biceps in order to show a form of, 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 a, of a pose. So Benito Mussolini used to pose. He used to stand before the people. He'd put his hands on his hips. He'd look up. He'd stand in a way where he was some kind of monster, something big, and he was a monster. That he was something that was above everybody. The Iman says, Honan here means that you do not pose when you walk. That when you move, you don't pose. You know, some people, when they stand, they look in a, in a position, they want to stand. They go, I can't stand like this. This is too uncool. My hand's got to be lower or higher. Um, yeah, I stand like this. My tricep might show. You know, they look for a position for them to stand so that they are constantly posing in every movement that they do. You know, if you want to go into a mental institute, one of the biggest mental institutes is a gym, honestly. You go, just sit there and watch everyone in front of the mirror. They pose all day, that's all they're doing. They're just posing, they move. And it's men posing in front of men. You know, and each person's admiring the other guy's body. This is the manner that the Imam says we shouldn't do. We shouldn't pose. The second one, he says we should not swagger. What's a swagger? When someone swagger is when someone walks arrogantly. They call it a swagger because he walks in a way that is good. He's some different style of walk. That he walks as if he's above the world. That he's untouchable. The manner in which he walks, that ya alam shufuni. You know, I'm somebody. Everyone take a, take a look at this. That I am something interesting. The imam says, this is all what is not. Yamshuna ala al Yamshuna ala al is not these two things. That he doesn't pose and he doesn't swagger. He doesn't strut in an arrogant and in an arrogant and proud manner. Then the verse in the Quran moves us one step forward in Surah Bani Israel or Surah Al Isra, as it's called. Wala tamshi fil ardi maraha. Innaka lan takhriq al arda wa lan tablugh al jibala tula. Here, the verse in the Quran it says, Do not walk in the land exultingly. Meaning what? Proudly, arrogantly. Do not walk like this because God says you cannot cut through the earth. You can't walk through things. You can't cut through the earth. And you're never going to be bigger than the mountain. You know, when you walk with basketball un basketballs under your arms and you walk in a manner where people want to see you, you know, your chest puffed out, you're not going to get bigger than the mountain. You're not going to cut through the earth. You're a human. You will remain a human. And that's what you are. And you are a human that is what? You are a human that is in need of the mercy of your Creator. When you understand this, then when you walk through the earth, you walk with the awe of God. You walk with remembrance that Allah sees over me. You know your position, so you look down because you know you are the leel. You know you are haqir. You know that you are a faqir. You know that you are someone that is insignificant. This is how I'm supposed to see myself. That I'm significant. I am in need. I'm impoverished. This is what we understand in the supplications that we read. Allah Azza wa Jal 
gives us this for us to understand. He draws the picture that you are in need. You are in need of my mercy. Don't walk through the land like you are something. Because news, you're not. In Surah Luqman, Luqman says to his son the same thing. He says, وَلَا تُسَعَّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تُسَعَّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ You know that snobbish flick people do with their face. That, you know, who's this person? You know, there's a book for, for Jane Austen. It's called Pride and Prejudice. I don't know if anyone's read it. So it's a classic. It's one of the greatest um, novels ever written. But in it, there's a guy who's trying to court a girl. He's trying to uh, get to know her. And he's of noble lineage. And she's a commoner. So when he speaks to her, he says, I'm willing to overlook your bloodline as opposed to mine. And you read and you think, oh my God. That he's saying, yani, let's let that go as long as you marry me. In other words... He can see himself above her. He perceives himself to be better than her. This snobbish, arrogant, pompous, proud attitude is scorned by Allah. So he says, وَلَا تُسَعَرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَ Once again, this verse is brought up again. Do not walk exultingly in the land. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ قُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ That Allah Azza wa Jal does not like anyone that's self-conceited. Someone that's proud. And Fakhur is someone that's proud, but he boasts about it. You know, I remember I was talking to someone. I love these stories that always come in when you're talking. You think of a story... And he said, I wrote a book and uh, they wouldn't accept it. I wanted to publish it and it was a book. It was a new way of understanding. And I said, um, you know, if you were from a well-known family, they would have published it immediately. That's what I, I just said. Maybe I was giving him a reason. And I wish I, I stepped on this guy's tail. He lost it. He said, do you know who my father is? He said, my father at the time of the establishment of Hezbollah in Lebanon... He said, Imam Khomeini came himself to make him the leader of Hezbollah and he refused. My father, Nabi Hibiri himself, came to make him the leader of Harakat Amal and he refused. I said, oh my God, who have I spoken to? This guy's father was going to be king of the world and he, I didn't know about it. And that was my sin. I didn't know who this guy was. And he went on, this guy was going to do this, this guy was... And I said, Allahu Akbar, what hole have I dug myself? And one of the other people that I know said, um, this guy talk about anything except where he is from or who his father is. I said, I didn't. He said, nothing about that. Talk about the birds, the skies. Stay away from this subject. Some people, they're like that. Do you know who I am? My father, my forefathers were all this. We come from this clan. Our clan is known for this and that. This is what he's talking about. Says, Inna Allah la yuhibbu. Allah does not like these people. He does not love these people. He dislikes these people. Kulla wa muhtalin fakhur. I have to leave it at this point because the next point needs to time for it to be established. We ask Allah in this blessed month to forgive us our sins and to make us humble towards one another. Take away the pride of our, in our hearts because you should know that no one enters paradise according to a hadith on Imam al-Sadiq. Anyone with a dot of kibr, a dot of pride does not enter paradise. So ask Allah in this month to remove all pride from our hearts. Just think of this hadith and I'll leave you with this just so that you can think of who you are. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, a man... What has man to do with vanity? How can a man love himself? He says he began as what? He says as a nutfa. Yani in, in a nutfa, a spermatozoa. This is what he began with. Something that simple. Basically, shay'un la yudhqar. Something you can't even see. And he says, and he finishes off as a what? He says as a jifa. He finishes off as a corpse. You know what a corpse is? We, we take this corpse, we put it in the fridge till we can wash it and bury it. 
No one takes a corpse and puts it at home, you know. We don't have necrophiliacs here. But no one takes the corpse and puts it in the house and looks after it and lives with it and co-inhibits it. What happens? Then we bury it. How far do we bury the corpse? We bury it as, down, as far, far, far down as we can so we don't get the smell to return to us of the rotting corpse. He says, this is the beginning, this is the end, and in between he's what? He's a carrier of human waste. That's what you are. This is what I am. And once I realize that I'm that, how much pride can you have? How much pride can exist? We ask Allah to remove all the pride of our, in our, with, that's within our hearts towards the believers and make us stern towards the unbelievers and stand righteously for what is right and gain our knowledge with humility. Wa Muhammad wa alihi